Do you think, I mean, you know, if this fight had gone the full one round and let's say there were some good exchanges, maybe he got you with a couple shots, you know, that even a first round fight, you could say we could justify an immediate rematch. <clears throat> do you feel like you will see Jose again or do you feel like this may be the last time you see him? You know, that's that's on him. That's up to him, up to him what, what, what way he goes about his uh, his next step. I feel maybe he could take a step back, recenter himself, take all that. Because you don't understand, like I said before, and I've said many times, they, it's it's not the same when you sign to fight me. It is a whole other, it's a whole other ball game. It's a completely different pressure bubble you're under. And he felt that. A guy that's been on top so long, 10 years on the feed, the company's only champion, but he felt the pressure like he'd never felt before. That's because he was facing me. But what happens is when they, they show up and they face me and they, they man up and do it, they become re-energized. Look at Holloway, look at Poirier, look at all these people. When they show up and they come through it, they become better individuals. So I think Jose should go back, regroup, maybe get back in line for a number one contender spot, and, and, and we'll go from there. I know the option is there for the 155-pound belt. I'll sit and I'll watch this. Um, the options are there now. The options are building. We've got Frankie, who, who had a good win last night. Um, that could be for the featherweight belt. Um, maybe Jose rematch or 155 pound strap. So I, I, I enjoy options. You know, options are a good thing in the fight game. Your coach, John Cavanaugh, that's a perfect segue to my next question, said that, you know, this was the last time you were going to cut to featherweight. It is a big cut for you. And you were interested. And Dana said, if you, you know, if you want that lightweight title fight, you know, if you go up, you could have it. Where Do you have a preference? I mean, how bad is that cut? How bad was the cut this time? And does that? I mean, I, I, I giggle all the time because every time I step on that scales and I step off the scales, everyone's like, it's the worst I've ever seen him. He he, he better rehydrate correct or he's in a hell of a lot of trouble. Don't get me wrong. It's a tough weight cut. But tell me one time I've missed it. Tell me one time I've not showed up the next day fresh. You know what I mean? Everyone up there on that stage is, that makes weight is, is, is not in the freshest of states. You know what I mean? This is, this is the business. But... This, this time around, although it was tough, I'd done it professionally. I cut no corners. I had a, a guy in that was helping me with, with, with the structure of it, and I trusted in the structure and in the plan, and the way came on me. Is it easy? No, but I get it done like a professional. So although I said I would not, I, I was considering, I wasn't considering leaving the featherweight uh, division for good because I am the unified world champion. This is my division. I say what I do now. So maybe I feel there's a couple of contenders in the mix. Let them maybe compete against each other while I go up and take the lightweight belt, allow a contender to emerge and go back down and take out that contender and then go back up after a lightweight contender has emerged and take out that contender. That was what my career path I felt was taking shape. Now Frankie had a good win yesterday, or yesterday, so he could probably climb up as a con an early contender already. So, and um, we've we've some options, we've some decisions to make. Um, but most certainly, I'm looking to replicate what I have achieved in my previous promotion, a two-weight world champion, held consecutively. I said I would do it, and I will do it. Do you consider this your first title defense, or do you look at this as now you're the champion, the real champion the whole way? I don't, I, um, yeah. I, I, I felt like I was always competing for a belt. Like I said, two-way world champion I came into this promotion as. So in my mind, I was defending my belt on the debut and every other fight. So it's nice, you know, they, 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 they call it a fake belt interim, toy belt, clown, joker. All of these things. So I'll go back and I'll sit patiently and wait and hear what they have to say now. And the last thing I was going to ask you is, is there a, any obligation that you feel, I guess, you, you came in and you sort of galvanized this division and really made it, I think, what it is now. And now that you've got, the, now that you've beaten Jose and you're the guy and uh, in the crosshairs of anybody coming up, and especially like Frankie, do you feel an obligation at this point on any level to kind of stick around for a little bit, or is it... i tell you one thing that won't be happening. If I go up to that lightweight division, there's no way in hell that I'm vacating my belt. That's not happening. 
There'll be a belt on one shoulder and a belt on the other on the other shoulder. I understand why previously they would have fighters do that because many fighters don't fight as frequently as I do. Tell me how many fights I've had in the past year. You know what I mean? I, I'm busy. I stay active. I'm fresh. So when I go up to the lightweight for that lightweight belt and take that lightweight belt, I will still be the featherweight champion also. So I will be a dual weight champion. There's no going up and vacating. The belt, the belts will still be active because I am active. I am as active as any of them. So there's no problem with that. So there's no vacating. That's not happening.